Hello, my name is Neil Lyon from Skyway Software, and in this screencast, I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into Spring MVC scaffolding. Um, in a separate screencast, I've actually gone through the scaffolding process and demonstrated how within a few minutes, you can have a full Spring MVC application uh, generated from your database tables in, in, in just a matter of minutes. Uh, in this screencast, we're going to take a little bit of a uh, closer look at the artifacts, or the, uh, the code artifacts and configuration artifacts that were actually generated as part of that implementation. Before I get started, I really want to real briefly talk about application layering because this is a concept that carries that's that's reflected uh, in many different parts of the generation process. And application la layering basically consists of taking your application components and breaking them down into discrete layers. And the reason why this is particularly relevant to My Eclipse for Spring is because My Eclipse for Spring generates many different web implementations. In the screencast that I was referring to just a few moments ago, we actually went through and scaffolded all of the different web layer implementations. In this particular screencast, we're only going to focus on what was generated that's relevant to Spring MVC. But what's also important to note is that regardless of which web layer implementation you choose, whether it's one or all, they all share the exact same service layer, domain layer, and data access layer implementation. So let's start by taking a look at the previous scaffolded project. And the first thing we'll notice when we open it up is that it has automatically been bootstrapped with all of the relevant Java libraries that I need. And if I open up the resources folder, this is where I'll see all of the Spring configuration files, or the Spring context files. And they are separated out into different layers. So we have one for the web, one for the service, and one for the DAO layer. And if I open up the DAO layer real quick, I'll, you'll notice that it does things, it automatically did things like wire in a transaction manager for me and set up my data sources based on the on the thing on the on the specification that I made during this in the scaffolding wizard. Um, if I switch to the Project Explorer, one of the other things you'll notice is that it, we automatically uh, well, uh, applied the uh, Spring nature to the project. So that causes the Spring elements to show up here. And when I expand the Spring elements, this allows me to take a look at my configuration from a bean perspective rather than looking at it from a file perspective. So if I dig a little deeper, now let's take a look at the generated code. So the generated code, this is another example where application layering comes into play. Each layer is generated into a separate package, and these package names were derived from what I specified during the scaffolding process. So if we take a look at the web layer, um, I can open up the controller, and I'll see a couple of different controllers in here. And if I expand the controller, it opens up here, and you'll notice that we're using the spring controller annotation. And you'll also notice that uh, it automatically opened up the Spring Annotator, which is one of the other new features in my Eclipse for Spring 8.6. And uh, there's a separate screencast which goes into more detail around that. Um, so if I close this, uh, if I take a look at the service layer, we'll see that I generate um, uh, my service interfaces as well as my service implementations using the Spring Service Annotation. Um, and then I can take a look at my domain model. Uh, which these are actually JPA entities. So if I open this up, you'll notice that we automatically generated, we automatically uh, reverse engineered the database table and generated a whole bunch of really useful and valuable name queries for you and wired up this, uh, this uh, the Java Bean for to automatically have everything that I need uh, to support JPA. And if I take a look at the data access layer, I have everything that I need to actually implement using the Spring at repository annotation. Uh, I have all of the methods that basically handle the data access for all of my different named queries. Now, if I take a look, uh, let's take a look at some of the UI stuff that was generated. So if I expand this folder, uh, I'm going to open up WebInf. Um, in this pages folder is where we actually for each domain model that was scaffolded we created the individual JSP pages and if I open up one of the J JSP pages um, you'll notice that the JSP pages are using standard JSTL, uh, the Spring Form Tag Library, and the Spring JavaScript Library. We automatically generate edit list and view components so that you can use uh, these within uh, your application. And we also leverage site mesh to actually bring all of these UI's components together. So we have a common folder here which has all the common components like the footer and the header. And then we actually have the site mesh decorators that actually bring all of those individual components into a full UI. So that's a real brief overview of the artifacts that are generated. If you want to give my clips for Spring for try, you can try it at the following URL. And uh, you can follow us at, at Genuatech on Twitter or at Skyway Software on Twitter. Or you can find many other uh, videos or screencasts on our My Clips for Spring YouTube.